Good morning and happy August and welcome to our worship service this morning. Our opening affirmation is from Daily Word, uh, August the 11th, 1938. And the affirmation is, love has power to heal, to restore, and to regenerate. Again, love has power to heal, to restore, and to regenerate. Let's just think about those words for a minute. The power to heal, the power to restore, and the power to regenerate. As good true students, we know that we have the ability to tap into divine mind and bring those divine ideas into manifestation through our soul, through our body, right here and right now. And if you believe that truth with me this morning, I invite you to affirm that there is only one presence, one power, one life, and one substance. And that's God, the good, the omnipotent. And we know that we live and move and have our being in this divine mind. So as we begin this service this morning, let us truly anchor ourselves into this truth, breathing into our own divinity, knowing that we are healthy, we are restored, and we are also regenerating day by day into another repeatable Christ. And if you believe this truth with me, I'd invite you to please affirm with me the uh, mantra that we use here at our church, which is, thank you, God, and so it is, Amen. And now our daily word. Good morning. A daily word for today is compassion. The affirmation is, I am kind and compassionate. Seeking to grow in compassion, I look to the example of Jesus. Gospel stories give many examples of Jesus showing compassion by demonstrating keen awareness of the needs and feelings of friends and strangers alike. I remember learning that Jesus did not turn away from social outcasts. He healed them and shared meals with them. His compassion fed a multitude and restored wine to a wedding reception. Upon learning that his dear friend had died, Jesus wept. Even when his disciples deserted him as he was crucified, Jesus asked God to forgive them. As I desire to grow in compassion, I know that my kind words and even simply my loving presence provide comfort. I listen deeply with my heart as well as with my ears. From Philippians chapter 2, verse 4, let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. And again, the affirmation, I am kind and compassionate. Thank you very much, Cynthia. Compassion, what a powerful idea that we can really bring into our Sunday service this morning because we all have the ability to really tap into that divine idea too and be even more compassionate than we have been or we think we can be. It's a divine idea that's ever unfolding within us, showing us the power of love, showing us the power of unity. So we just say thank you so much for that daily word. I'd like to connect up now with Silent Unity, uh, the Silent Unity Chapel and the prayer workers back at Silent Unity at Unity Village in Missouri. And we know as we connect up vibrationally in omnipresence, we are there supporting those workers, we are there supporting those individuals on the property, taking calls, answering emails, in any way that they're giving service to people who are contacting Silent Unity for prayer. And we also know that we are connected here vibrationally, and we are feeling that compassion, we are feeling that love, and we're also strengthening our power in knowing the truth, that we truly are all divine. And we just know that to be true. We just say, thank you, God. And so it is. Amen. I'm reminded that Myrtle is still with us and she's doing very well. She says she really likes my Sunday lesson. So it's all good. So this morning we are going to be talking about nine choices that you can make individually that could change your life. Do you really want to change your life? I guess that's really the question. Do you really feel that you want to uh, change your patterns of behavior? I'd like to share a scripture with you, but first, uh, I almost forgot, we have our comic. 
And this is a really good one because if anyone knows me very well, they know I love cats. And it is, cats don't always make the best employees. And if you see this comic, you'll definitely know because the cat looks so prim and proper on the first uh, slide in, the, uh, in front of the desk. And then in the second slide, he's pushing his paperwork and his duties off to the side. And if, again, as most people know, you don't adopt cats, they adopt you. So that is good. A little bit of humor is good for the soul. So let's breathe into that too this morning. I'd like to uh, start this lesson uh, from the Jewish scriptures, the book of Proverbs, which is a book of wise sayings that were uh, put together through the centuries. And this is from Proverbs chapter 18, and this is verse 2. Probably one of the most powerful verses in the Old Testament. It is, death and life are in the power of the tongue, and those who love it will eat its fruits. You see, metaphysically, we are always eating the fruits of our own tongue, meaning what we speak, what we communicate, what we think, what we feel. We are eating the fruits, and those fruits can be really delicious and sweet, or they can be very sour and tart. We, as good metaphysicians, know that we control what is going on through our own consciousness. So again, as we're going to be talking about choices, I think it's important to realize the vocabulary that we use. Why are we saying the words that we're saying? Because that really leads to the choices that we make in life. Again, let's define what the word choice means. Uh, the word choice is defined as an act of selecting or making a decision when faced with two or more possibilities. And it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, evil or good. It can be possibilities that are both good. Or could be possibilities that are two possibilities you don't want or don't care for. But it's the ability to consciously make that choice. I think we need to remind ourselves again that in truth, which we call God, God is the reality. And as the Holy Scriptures tell us, it's the same yesterday and today and yea forever. The law of spirit does not change. We live in the law of our own consciousness. We use the laws to demonstrate the kind of life that we choose to live and enjoy. And this talk about choice brings up one of our apostles of our 12 powers, which is the Apostle Matthew. And again, he represents will. And it's the ability, again, to choose, to decide, to command, to lead, and to determine. So are you going to determine your life choices? Are you just going to go with the flow? Because it's, there's one thing with going with the flow, but is it the flow that you want to go with? And again, we have this divine attribute within us represented by the Apostle Matthew. And again, it, it says he represents the decision-making part of our brain. And the thing is, we're using it whether we're really conscious of it or not. But in metaphysics, we always want to go to a higher understanding, a higher level, the highest ideal of will. Because you, we need to not be willful, we need to be willing. And I'm talking about for ourselves. I'm not talking about pushing our will on other individuals. That's called manipulation. I'm talking about being willing to engage in a prayer practice that fits your personal needs. I, I'm talking about being willing to go deeper than you have yesterday or even maybe the year before. Where are you on your metaphysical journey? If you're willing to discover more of your divinity and the light within you, you have the ability to rediscover, to re-experience the power of this divine presence within us. And as I'm reminded of Myrtle here, Myrtle discovered that within her, and that is what really caused and allowed her healing to occur. And the same thing with our co-founder, Charles Fillmore. Our minds become unified with divine mind. How do we become unified? By acknowledging our inner Christ nature. We don't have to go outside and look for it. We don't have to go to a holy hill to find it. We don't have to be in a special shrine. We don't have to sp uh, wear special clothes. It's within us. It's acknowledging within us that we have it within us, but we have to activate it. We have to activate it and use it because our divinity really is cumulative. The more we use it, the more we believe in it, the more we're willing to stand on the principle, especially of absolute good. Again, for the uh, Jewish scriptures, we have uh, the book of Isaiah, and this is uh, chapter 30, verse 21. This is the way, walk in it. 
And what I like about this verse, it says, this is the way. There's another verse in the New Testament that says, Jesus is saying, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. The key in that verse, and even this verse here, is the word way. The word way in Aramaic means method. So this is saying, this is the way. That's the God way of truth. It's God consciousness. It's God realization within each and every one of us. This is the way that Isaiah is uh, stressing that we as individuals need to remember to go to that higher standard, to really use God and his law as a measuring stick, excuse me, Myrtle, using God as a measuring stick on all of our activities. Which brings us into our first choice. And our first choice is uh, our choices create our lives. Who do you think is creating your life? The choices within you. You know, everything is a life choice. It's a reflection of where you are in consciousness. Take a deep breath because that one's kind of stumbles. We stumble over that one. Because there's a part of us, our Adam, our lower nature, that doesn't want to take responsibility. It wants to place blame. And blaming is really giving up our power. It's giving up truly the divine right of dominionship. And if we're going to activate choice and really live and activate the power of will within us, we need to know who is in charge. It's us. Uh, uh, two, we want different results. If you want different results in your life, you have to make different changes. And I want to say, too, that results can come in many shapes, sizes, and forms. Again, this is your spiritual journey. This is your spiritual journey. How you use it, how you implement it. The path that you travel on is the choice that you are willing to make. It's really up to you. And that's a, a big responsibility, but it's also very uplifting because it means that we are not bound. We are not limited. We truly have liberty. I want to share with you two ideas about thought, and there's two thought schools. One is, number one, we have no control, which is really where traditional duality is with um, traditional Christianity, that since Adam and Eve ate from the forbidden fruit with the talking snake, that they were thrown out of the garden. Of course, they had fig leaves when they were thrown out, and that you have no choice. And because of that blanket consciously over them, you are always fragmented. Again, there's another understanding of that uh, truth in that story is that we have the ability to really to have control. We have all the control. One of the things in that story, if you study it metaphysically, which is a powerful story, which is really Adam and Eve really represent, represent the, uh, the conscious and the subconscious mind within us. And again, the serpent or the snake, it's never called the devil, is always a representation of outside sensation as causative. And we know as good, true students, we are not really supposed to be concerned so much about what is out here. It's supposed to be within, out. We color what we see. We color what we feel. But most of the world in a duality, third dimensional consciousness believes this. This is happening to me. It's cloudy outside, so I have to have a bad day. We're taking that in. And that's really not the vibration as the Christ that we want to tap into. It's not the vibration that Jesus the Christ tapped into or any great master teachers. I want to say uh, choice also strips us, if we don't believe that we have power, it strips us of really the options that we have. We have options. We're the Christ. We are the divine image and likeness. We have choices that we can make. I want to say also that uh, if you break things down, the distinctions in our lives really come down to the choices that we're making. Even today, what are the choices you're making? You're making the choice to get up when you get up. You're making the choices to go to bed when you go to bed. You're making the choices to exercise. You're making all those choices, and it goes into our metaphysical studies also. So again, my, my uh, real emphasis this morning is don't allow someone else to make your choices. Go within. Go within and take Take really the wisdom that is within you. Really tap into that reservoir within you and find out what you are willing to do, what, where you're using the power of will to shape the world that you want to experience.
I'd like to share a powerful truth with you, and this is from Madison Taylor. Try not to take everything personally. Things that people say and do don't always have anything to do with us. You could spend six months studying this thought. Why do we take criticisms? Why do we take negativity? Why do we take it so, so seriously? And again, if we're living in an endemic mind of good versus evil, that is where most of mass consciousness is. And if you don't believe that, turn on the radio. Turn on the news. Watch your cable news shows. Read the newspapers. It's there all the time. And it's, it's really sensationalism. And I'm not saying that we should not know what's going on. We do need to be informed. But we don't need to take it on personally. We do not need to take it on personally, that energy. I also want to say choice comes in different flavors, different shapes, and different sizes again. You get to choose individually. You get to choose individually the choices that you're going to make. Again, we make all different types of choices in our lives. We make career choices. We make income choices. We make friend choices. We make environmental choices. And we also make belief choices. And if we believe it to be so, as good true students, it will be so for us. Just like when I was growing up, if you had a rabbit's foot, which you, even, you don't even say that anymore, but you have a rabbit's foot or a horseshoe for good luck. I'm here to tell you metaphysically the power is not in the rabbit's foot, whether it's colored red or green, and it's not in the horseshoe either, whether it's rusty or bent. If it's going to bring you luck, it's because you believe it will bring you luck. And it also can be used the other way. If you believe it could bring you a curse, it'll bring you a curse. We get to choose how it's going to outpicture in our life, in our relationships. By choice and focus, this is what controls our life destinies. What are you focusing on? It's going to depend on where your choices are. Do you have an open mind, an open heart, an open soul? Or are you just not really that open anymore? You kind of figured out you, you got your degree or you read that book and you know it all. That's not the choice I'm talking about. I'm talking about really a spiritual choice that no matter how much education or how much sweat off your brow that you have learned through life's lessons, we also and we always have the choice to go deeper. I like to say that when you stand in the principle of your own indwelling Christ, you get to choose. So this morning I'm inviting you to choose, make a choice for the Christ, because it's a game shifter. When you are willing to accept the choices, and if you've made a choice you don't like, you can always change it. But when you're willing to do that, it's really a game changer for your own life. I'd like to share a thought from you, and this is from A Course in Miracles. Salvation of the world depends on me. Salvation of the world depends on me. What a powerful thought. And remember, the word salvation means liberation. So don't let the word get stuck in old theology or creeds. We all want to be liberated. We all want to experience more life freedom. And what I love about that teaching with the Course is sharing with us is you don't look outside anywhere else you look within. It is within, within us to make those choices. So again, that salvation of the world, of our own world, our own consciousness, depends, is coming from within us. Powerful thought, especially when we're dealing with choices. Our number, our second choice, as I'm sharing with you, is our feelings are guideposts. Our feelings are guideposts. The signs and the symbols that are showing up in your life have meaning especially to you, because they're, they're signs that you're seeing. If, again, if you don't care for the signs that you're seeing, maybe you should make some different choices. I want to share with you that negative emotion means every time my thoughts or behaviors are moving in the uh, opposite direction of who and what I want to desire. You see, negative emotions are really a choice. Are you willing to make a different choice? And I'm not saying that you might not be frustrated. And I'm not saying that you might not have your sock in a knot. But we have the, we have the pow a power within us to, to change that energy level and really make it for a positive choice. I thought a very interesting uh, idea that I came across was that caregivers of small children pay attention to the emotions 
of the people they're watching, but also even pet owners. They can tell the range of emotions by the way their pets uh, display their feelings. They're observant. They are aware. That's a part of having the ability to have choice. Are you aware? Are you aware of what's going on in your life? Are you really aware of what is going on in your life? Again, we know that when something feels great or when we know when something really is sour in our life, who feels that? We feel that within us. We feel that energy. So I would encourage each of us this morning to be more aware because it'll allow us and it allows us to gauge the energy we're immersed in to make better choices for the day. We need to be true to our own truth choices. Are you true to the choices that you make? Or do you make them and then you whine about them? Are you true to the choices that you make? You see, they exist to show us the way. Create a choice today. Create a new choice this morning. Today's Sunday. What is different? What's going to be different about this Sunday than last Sunday? What are you going to do differently? What are you going to think about differently? or not. It's all up to you. It's your choice. I'd like to share with you a, a powerful lesson. This is from Deepak Chopra, and it is, when we struggle against this moment, we are actually struggling against the entire universe. What are we fighting the universe for? Why are we fighting the currents of life? Why not flow with them in the direction that we want? Why not truly live the life we've come to live? Which is the third choice I'm sharing with you this morning, which is first love you. That's not a typo. It's first love you. You're precious in the sight of spirit. You're created after that holy image and likeness. And if you don't realize how special you are, you're not going to use your conscious gifts. You're not going to use your 12 powers to their highest understanding or level. And you're not going to really make choices from the divinity within you. Loving ourselves at times can be difficult, but so vitally important. It also means without forgiveness, because if we don't love ourselves, it affects how we forgive other people. It affects our broken relationships. It really uh, disillusions our life expectations. And what happens is it creates barriers. When we make choices that are not healthy for us, that are based in duality thinking, they become the barriers we experience. And then we really can't experience authentic love. We can't experience authentic compassion because you can only give what you know. You can only share the truth if you truly know who you are. That is the vibrational level that you are. So I encourage you to spend some time this morning thinking about who you are. I'm not talking about your last name. I'm not talking about your nationality. Who are you? What are your gifts? What could you offer to not only yourself, but your own soul in your own environment this day? You get to choose that. It's your choice. And again, unless we love ourselves, we will not be able to acknowledge or accept the love of others. <sighs> that is so true. We have to love ourselves. And again, I'm not talking about a narcissistic. <coughs> that's what I'm talking about. That. I'm talking about an authentic love, knowing that we're on a journey, that we're growing and expanding, but we have worth. We have incredible worth. We are created out of God stuff. Who are you to say that you do not have that sacred worth? We have it. It's within us. But again, we have to tap into it. We need to learn the truth of what you are, what I am. We are a divine love. We are divine love making choices and then manifesting those choices in our life. I'd like to share a story with you, and it's from the East, and it's a famous samurai came to a Zen master, Hawken. Uh, being a samurai, he knew only about life and death. He just wanted to know where were the gates of heaven and hell. Then when the uh, time comes, uh, he could escape heaven and go to, uh, excuse me, escape hell and go to heaven. So he asked the master, where is paradise? Where is paradise? Uh, where is hell? Where are their gates? Please tell me. In reply, the master questioned him. Who are you? The samurai replied, I am a samurai leader. 
I am a warrior, and even the emperor pays tribute to me. The master started laughing and laughing and said, Really? You? You are a samurai? You're a samurai leader? Uh, you look like a poor one to me. The samurai's pride was very hurt. He forgot why he came to the master and whipped out his sword and pointed it toward the master's neck to kill him. As he pointed the sword towards the master, the master started laughing again and even more, this time saying, this is the hell gate here. You will open it with your ego by holding a sword in anger. The samurai realized his mistake, and he calmed down and put his sword away. The master continued, now when you calm down, you will have open heaven's gate. What I love about this story is that it's really metaphysically all within us. Heaven and hell are not in a dimension away from us that we can't see. Heaven and hell metaphysically is right where we are. Heaven and hell is a state where we're not happy, where we're frustrated. We're living with a cloud over our head. And what I love about this is, again, that samurai represents truly our lower self, our edemic self, that just wants to know where the doors are. But what the great teacher is trying to show him is that it's in consciousness. And when we get angry and we don't make the right choices, that's when we start living the effects that we really don't want to live. Powerful story from the East. I'd like to share with you a uh, quote, and this is from the Science of Mind textbook, page uh, 388. Life is good and God is good. Why not accept this and begin to live? When are you going to start living? When are you going to start making the good choices for your own particular life? The choices that you decide. You as an individual, whether you're married or you're not married, wherever you are, whatever you do, you have the ability to make those choices for yourself because in consciousness, you make those decisions. And that leads us to number four of our choice options, which is we teach people how to treat us. Ooh, that's a good one. We teach people how to treat us. Well, where do you think they're going to learn? If you have no respect for yourself, do you think other people are going to have respect for yourself? If you do not believe that you're worthy of having a certain amount of respect, do you think you're going to get it? You know, as a good, true student, you, we always give respect. But I think it's something we really need to think about. Because again, if we don't really treat or value our own worth, people are going to pick up on that. And people will start living on that flow of energy. And that's really not where we want to be as good, true students. Again, by what we allow, what we stop, and what we reinforce. Again, what are you willing to allow in your life? How much are you willing to take? When are we willing to say stop? That is enough. And what are we willing to reinforce? Are we willing to stand in principle? Are we willing to stand that, no, I deserve better than this, and you deserve to treat me in a respectful way, and I, I expect that from you, and I'm going to demand that of you as a good true student. This leads us to the ability to take a self-inventory, which is so important as a true student, because the job is always within us. We're not here to change the world. Charles and Myrtle Fillmore, our co-founders of Unity, did not uh, start the Unity movement to change the world. Now. It does have a powerful impact, but it was always about changing consciousness within the, the individual first. That's where the real choice power is. So again, if you take an inventory, I would like to ask you this question. This question, is what I'm showing others what I really want to convey? What do you want to convey? How do you really want to show up this morning? How do you want to show up for the month of August 2020? You get to decide that. Not me or not the, the people next door to you. What do you choose and what do you want? Now would be a perfect choice time to begin anew. Are you willing this morning to make some new choices? Are you willing to maybe reinvigorate your spiritual practice? I've said this before and I believe it's very powerful. Many of you read the daily word in the morning. Maybe you should read the daily word in the morning and also before you go to bed. Just that simple act can have a powerful effect, not only in your sleep time, but also the vibration of your soul and your aura. Again, but you need to make that choice. I can't do it for you.
I'd like to share a wisdom, and this is from uh, Mark Twain. The two most important days in your life are the day you were born and the day you found out why. Sounds like a good metaphysical, metaphysician and good metaphysical question, doesn't it? So again, it's you're born, but why were you born? What are you? Metaphysically, that is what we're all about. Rediscovering the purpose of our soul's incarnation, which leads us to choice number five. Find your purpose in what you do. What you do, not what I do, not what the people in the next town do, maybe not what's, what do you do? You have to find that purpose, which means, again, purpose. It's a very powerful uh, idea. Purpose also uh, has to do with intent. Again, it eludes people because they don't find themselves and they get lost and confused. So again, as good truth students, what's your life purpose? Or is it just to get by, just to make ends meet? Is that, that's really not much of a, a wonderful life purpose. I mean, just making ends meet, big woo. I mean, we could do so much more. In order to enjoy life's details, we must live each moment with choice and purpose. And I'm here to say, if we truly make the right choices, we believe in the power of choice, and we apply that to the purpose that we want to show up as or in or do or behave, that's how we really transform our lives. That's how we become renewed. We become born again in our own consciousness. Again, give complete, we need to give complete choice attention to each task. When you're doing something, are you really present? Or are you trying to do 500 things at once? Are you really given the attention when you're in a conversation with somebody? Are you really giving them the, the ability that you're there, that you really care and that you're listening, that you're really listening? Because really listening to someone else speak is a choice. And thought. What are the thoughts that are flowing through your mind? There's a lot of thoughts on the sea of consciousness, but we get to choose as good true students the thoughts that we want to put our attention on, the thoughts that we want to hook, hook up and we really want to expand in our own life. True choice purpose is the secret, really, of the being metaphysically centered. See, when we really know our true purpose, that we're the Christ, it's really the secret of our own beingness. We don't have to reinvent the wheel. We just have to rediscover it within us. We rediscover the divinity within us, and it shines into all of our experiences and all our relationships. I want to get back to the moral of that story I just said about the samurai and the great uh, Zen priest. And it is, uh, both heaven and hell's gates are inside of us, and they are a choice. If we are not conscious enough and uh, we act out of anger, uh, it paves uh, really the path to hell's gate. If we are uh, conscious and we keep calm, this is a step towards heaven's gate. Heaven and hell are not afterlife events. They are here and now. These gates are open, but it's our choices that direct our path if it's going to be a heaven gate or a hell gate. Again, we get to choose which one do we want to walk through. And we know when we walk through either one of them, it's going to color and change our aura. So if we're walking through Hell's Gate and we feel really depressed and we really want to be angry, we're going to start whining about everything. We're going to start complaining about everything. Nothing's going to end up right. If we go through Heaven's Gate, we're going to see things differently. We're going to see things from a divine order, knowing that things are unfolding, not necessarily according to Michael's way, but according, it's unfolding according to nature's way, the way things are supposed to be. Again, it's a choice. So this morning, are you willing to make choices? Are you willing to make the right truth choices? I'd like to share a thought with you, and this is from Mark Chernoff. When things aren't adding up in your life, begin subtracting. And this is the power of denial. I am a firm believer in the power of denial. And again, you're not denying what is happening. If the house is on fire, that doesn't mean we all go to bed. What I'm saying is you're denying that this outside experience, whatever is happening to you, is not going to control your life. You will deal with it. You will walk through it with spirit, but you're not going to allow it to chain you to any negativity. Because if you do, then it's really controlling your life. 
then you're really not showing up as the Christ. You're making a choice for negativity. So again, this leads to a powerful thought, and this is choice number six. Be solution finders. We hear about problems all the time. When are you going to accept the fact that as a Christ, you have the ability to be a solution finder? That's right. The solutions that we are looking for, we will find. Remember what Joseph Murphy said, in every problem is its own solution. But you have to find it. You, have to, might, you might have to dig for it. You might have to pray about it. You might have to go for a walk. But if you really put it to spirit, you will find out, and you will find that solution. Uh, people spend so much time with their problems, there's so little room for considering a solution. Again, I'm not saying that we don't have uh, problems, quote, in our life, but we need to figure out how we can get over them. If we have a flat tire, our solution is to get air in the tire so we can get moving again. And I think what happens with us is a lot kind of with our ideas. We have a lot of flat ideas. We have a lot of ideas that are half truths. We need to change that. We need to really pick the ideas and the feelings that really work for us so they show up in our relationships. Um, a new choice, a focusing point, really improves all of our future. Who's going to improve your future for the month of August? It's not the media. Who is going to improve your individual future? It's you and I. It's, it's the Christ within us. That's where we're going to find the choice. That's where we need to go. That's where we need to find that secret place of the Most High within each and every one of us. I'd like to share with you a quote from Myrtle Fillmore. I think it's probably one of our most powerful, and it is. Salvation is in our living by the Christ pattern, not only by the teachings of the man Jesus Christ, but by the Christ mind within us. Let us take a deep breath and breathe into that truth. And again, there's that word salvation. It means liberation. We have the ability to tap into a liberating consciousness. We call it the Christ mind. And you're not going to find it under the piano. You're not going to find it under a palm tree. You're not going to find it in the dirt. You're not going to find it in your basement. It's within you and I. We have that pattern within us, but we have to awaken to it. And not only awaken to it, but we need to stay awake and truly allow it to have an impact by that choice of living the Christ way. Which leads us to number seven of our choice choices. We are what we behold. What are you looking at? Where do you put your attention when you're seeing things? Because we truly become what we behold. If we see a lot of negativity, we start becoming negative. If we see a lot of ugliness, that's what it shows up on our life. It shows up on our attitudes. It shows up in everything that we do because it especially goes into our subconscious mind. And then we start reacting. We're not here to react. We're here to respond by new choices, each and every one of us. Which means as good, true students, we need to be satisfied. We need to surround ourselves with solid people and develop our own truth resources. Even though you have a whole bunch of truth books on the shelf, if you're not reading them all the time or having them engaged in your uh, prayer practice where you're engaging the material in those books, they're not going to really do you much good. All they do is collect dust. And as I've said, I know a lot about books, and I know a lot about dust. But the key is to get into those books, rediscover the chestnuts of golden ideas that you can tap into. I'd encourage you to visualize your goals and use this idea of choice, because what we visualize, we become. Remember it says in the Old Testament or the Jewish scriptures, you know, without vision, men perish. Humanity, we are created with a vision faculty. We have that third eye within us. Are we using it to all its fullness? We need to. I'd like to share a thought with you, and this is from Joshua Becker. It takes giving up the person we wanted to be in order to appreciate the person we can actually become. When are you going to become the Christ for your own life? When are you going to take a stand? When are you going to do it? Which leads us to number eight of our choices. We stop taking things personally. So somebody says something. So somebody sends you an email. So somebody is having a bad day and they project it on you. Big woo. 
Why are you allowing it to make you get sick? Why are you allowing it to go over and over in your mind? Let it go. Become Teflon. Let it roll off of you. It's a powerful thought. And you let it roll off of you in your consciousness by the choice that you're hearing where they're coming from. And maybe it could be some uh, idea that you need to entertain. But you don't have to get into the dr it swamps with it. You can think differently. You can choose. You can choose a different uh, approach. Which means what others think about us is really none of our business. I say this often in my classes here at Unity Way Church. We come into this world, we incarnate alone, and we're going to leave alone. And I don't say that to make people scared, but I want to give the realization that you are a complete Christ. You know, even though you come from a family like the Waltons, that doesn't mean you're all going to go at the same time. We are a unique creation, and that means we come into this world individually. We incarnate by ourselves, and we're going to leave ourselves. We are a fully loaded Christ. So let's really remember that and make that choice. Another thing is we really, do you really want to go crazy? If you really want to go crazy and let the wheels fall off, start taking every criticism and every critique and every negative idea that you hear and take it personally. Let's get real sick. Let's get real sick. Let's get on the floor and roll in the dirt. I mean, if that's, that's what you're really leading toward, because if you keep taking this all in and, oh, they said this and, oh, they said that, you're just rolling in the dirt. You're just rolling in those ideas. We need to stop it. We need to hear what they're saying, but we don't have to take it personally. We can see where it's coming from. So, again, choice reveals our character. Do you have a Christ character? See, the Christ that we follow, the master teacher, he chose the character he showed up in because he was just like us. Jesus is not our way show if he's just not like us. The only difference we believe with Jesus and us is he fully activated all the God potential within him. And we're still asleep to some of that. But what activated within Jesus really was the choice because choice reveals characters. The choices that we make, the choices that we've had made, they will reveal not only our character, but also the relationships in the environment in which we live. I'd like to share a thought from you, and this is from a, uh, an old uh, religious science minister, and it's Terry Cole Whitaker. And she says, there, are no, there is no such thing as a free lunch. How many of us are looking for a free lunch? Come on, guys. We know there's no free lunch. We get what we deserve. We get through cause and effect. If we do not like what we're receiving, then we need to change the cause. Emmett Fox used to tell his classes all the time, the great metaphysical teacher, don't worry about the effects in life. Don't worry about the appearances in life. Stay on the cause side of the equation. Effects and appearances will take care of themselves. And again, that really means like kind of what Terry Cole Whitaker is saying here is there is no such thing as a free lunch. Who wants a free lunch? You get to choose the lunch you want by the thoughts and the feelings and the images that you hold. Which leads us to number nine, which is our last choice point I'm going to be sharing with you. And it is mistakes are growth opportunities. You don't like the lunch you have. You don't like what's been dealt you. Let's look at this mistake and say, hey, I can change it. I can change it. I can go forward from this situation and I can change it. If you can't change it, no one else is going to change it. Because you're the one living it. You're the one experiencing it. That power is within us. We have the dominionship, which gives us truly the ability to choose, to choose the life we want. Mistakes are the building blocks to massive life successes and achievements. We have all come to have success and massive achievement, achievements. And if we've made mistakes or if we fall, we can get back up again. We've just learned we don't make that mistake. We can do it a different way and really use it kind of like as a spiritual game, something kind of like as a child. If something doesn't work out as a child, you just move in the other direction. You don't, oh, I'm so upset about this. I got to talk about it and I got to talk about it. You just change. You choose to think differently. So again, in closing, I'd like to say stop struggling against the universe. We spend way too much time trying to push against the universe, push against the flow, push against choices supposedly that are being made toward us. You and I are metaphysicians. You and I have the power of these teachings to enact. But I'm here to tell you, they only work if you're willing to use them, to engage in them every single day. 
You know, it is my prayer for each and every one of us that we live by a choice so we can live authentically, fearlessly, and truly unapologetically. We are powerful, powerful creators through consciousness of the Christ. We have the ability to choose the Christ, to make a decision for the Christ, which means that we are here and we're going to accept our divinity this morning. And we're going to accept it on Monday and Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday and Friday. Every single day, we are going to pick ourselves back up and we're going to meditate that we have a choice. And even if we fall short, even if we make some mistakes along the way, we can truly still, as Jesus would say, pick up your cross and follow me. And that's really what choices really stand for. That's really what this lesson really stands for. Jesus said, pick up your cross. Jesus didn't say, I picked it up for you. You're a, such a lucky person. Look what I did for you. He didn't say that. He said, you pick up your cross. It's your journey. Use him as the role model. The pattern is within us. So again, I'd like to just recap these ideas of choices. The first one is choices create our lives. Number two, our feelings are guideposts. Let's use them. Let's use them this week. Number three, uh, first love you. Fall in love with the divine within you. How that shows up, I don't know. Ask your soul. Go into meditation. What does it mean to love you? And again, not in a narcissistic way, in a divine way. You are God's image and likeness. You are God's image and likeness. Number four is we teach people how to treat us. If we don't like the relationships that we're in, let's start showing up differently and allow people that we have boundaries. We have a boundary. We have ideas where just don't go that far, or we only will go that far, and only you can set those personal boundaries. Uh, number uh, five is uh, find your purpose. We all have a life purpose. And I encourage you, if you're kind of struggling with that, take the name, your birth name, whether you like it or not, because there's a vibration in it. Take it into the silence and repeat it as a mantra. You'll be surprised at the vibrations and the thoughts that will be downloaded to you. Because that name that you have, whether you like it or not, is truly the name your soul chose energy-wise when you came into this incarnation. And it will definitely show you how to find your purpose. Number six is be solution finders. Be solution finders. Look at the problem, analyze the problem, but find the solution. Choose to be a solution finder. Uh, number seven is we are what we behold. Stop looking at the negative. Turn off the TV. It's not good enough just to mute the cable news channel. Turn it off. Look at a blank screen. Go look at a leaf outside. You'll get just as much wisdom out of that leaf, I guarantee you. Uh, number eight is stop taking things personally. When somebody gives you a criticism, when somebody says something you feel is off-colored, consider the source. But also remember who you are and then respond in a loving way. And number nine is uh, mis uh, mistakes are growth opportunities. This Sunday, let us look at any mistakes we have made, whether they're real big mistakes or real small mistakes. It doesn't really matter. Let's look at them as really opportunities to grow and expand and unfold our own inner divinity. Many of the ancient teachers would say that we're all like a lotus flower. And the beauty of a lotus flower is not just when it's all scrunched together, it's when it's blossoming. But not only when its petals are open, but also the fragrance. Paul talks about it, the aroma of the Christ. May you find this morning the aroma of the Christ within you. And may you be saturated in that aroma. That aroma is the divinity within you. It is high and it is holy and it is a choice. It is an indwelling choice that each of us have the ability to make. May this be the day we make the choice for our own divinity. Thank you, and God bless. This is the time in our service where we have the opportunity to share our love offerings, our gifts, and our tithes. And invite you, uh, whatever your gift may be, to put it in the palm of your hands. 
and invite you, uh, I put it, to put it in your palm of your hands because it gives your energy signature. Because it imbues whatever it may be, even if it's an electronic donation. You put your hands together because you're imbuing it as it goes through our church and through our ministry. And I give great thanks for all the tithes that we receive. I want to say unityway.com if you want our physical address. Or you can go to unityway.com and also make electronic donation. But right now, let us imbue this gift with the choice that we're divine. And that we have the aroma of the indwelling Christ. And that whoever is touched by this gift, which will go through Unity Way Church, will go through Unity Village, Silent Unity, it will go through uh, Unity Urban Ministerial School, it will go through all the Unity uh, places that we tithe to, and then it goes forth into this universe. May the aroma of making this choice for the indwelling Christ, may it bless us, and may it bless this world. And we use our prayer, divine love through me blesses and multiplies all that I give and all that I receive. And if you believe in that high truth, if you'd please affirm with me the prayer we use here at church, which is, thank you, God, and so it is. Amen. And now, before we do our prayer of protection, I'd like you to think and choose the words. Choose the understanding that these words mean for you. That we just don't say this prayer for rote. We say it for ourselves. We say it for our unity movement. We say it for the world. We say it for our planet. May it cause us to make better choices in our life. It's the power of this prayer protection. We are secure. And no matter what is happening out in the world, no matter where we are with this COVID, let us focus on the God within us. And let us share this high truth with every soul that we meet, whether in, in the invisible or who we speak to. May it truly show up in our life, and may they be healed by that truth too. Will you join with me? It's the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is and all is well. Make a choice. Make a choice for the Christ this morning and start living a fabulous life. Thank you and God bless.